Welcome back to the Live Boundless Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Ride Clean, the simple and easy way to keep your motorcycle or car clean. Simply shake, spray, and wipe, and you will have a mirror-like finish, UV protection. It's made in America. Check them out at rideclean.co. Use promo code RBPODCAST for 25% off, plus free shipping, plus two-ounce bottle, and the microfiber. That's rideclean.co. My guest, by special request via Instagram and by multiple people, uh, he's a YouTuber. YouTuber. He's a YouTuber. (laughs) He's a YouTuber, uh, does motorcycle reviews, uh, has a couple motorcycles himself, been riding for a while, just had a great experience with the people out on Rawhide, which I'm a big fan of. My guest is Brandon Picasso, like Picasso, but with a B, Picasso. Very cool. We got into it, the conversations about how he started writing and how he launched his YouTube channel. So here we go. <laughs> Brandon, how you doing, man? Good, man. How are you doing? Wonderful. Thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, I, I see you're you're a very busy bee. Um, you're covering a lot of videos. How long have you been doing this? Um, hardcore for at least four years. Four years? Yeah. And then just real quick for the listeners, uh, what, where's your channel? Where can people find you? And uh, and tell them a little bit more about what, what you're doing. All right. So I'm Brandon Picasso. I run the Brandon, the Brandon Picasso channel on YouTube. And essentially what I do is uh, I make YouTube videos about motorcycles. And uh, yeah, my specialty, I guess, or my niche in this community is uh, muscle bikes. Um, I ride a V-Rod muscle and I have a Suzuki N109R. And, but I'll ride anything. But that's just what I personally own. How long have you had the, the V-Rod muscle? Uh, coming up over... Almost a year, It'd Almost be a year a in year. January, but I bought it in November of last year, but I received it in January of this year. So look, right at a year. How I long love that bike. Yeah, it's it's fucking sexy. Uh, the, the position for me is a little, you know, because it's like straight. Yeah, forward, legs are forward. I'm, I'm so used right. to, mid, or, you know, mid controls mm. and like T-bars and stuff. But the bike, it, it's sexy. It's a beast. Oh, so yeah, you, man. I, I don't want to steal on it. Much. Hmm? You must have got a steal on it getting it last year. Yeah, uh, I think I paid right at right at ninety five hundred for it. That shipped and everything, and now the thing, man, is going up in value. So um, I can essentially sell it for what I paid for it, and probably put another five thousand miles on it, and so for what I paid for it. So the market for those things is crazy, especially over there in Russia. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sure. I know uh, this is kind of random, but I, I picked up, uh, I put the deposit for the cyber truck. Really? And, the Tesla? Oh, sweet. Yeah, the Tesla cyber truck. And I'm so excited about it. And I got a buddy of mine that told me, hey, man, when you get it, there's some people from Dubai, they'll pay you like $150,000, $200,000. Oh, I'm yeah. like, what? Really? I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to have a, a flip aspect to it because the I'm pretty sure the, the orders for them already were backlogged right when they came out with the pre-orders for them. So whoever gets them first, they can easily flip them for a profit right off the bat. So, yeah, yeah, I, I put it, I want to say the day of, and I think my place, I was just looking at my place after he told me that I'm like in the first hundred thousand. Oh yeah. yeah. And I did yeah. the tri motor, which now they just upgraded to four motors. Did you see that? Oh, man. No, I didn't see it. So <laughs> the, the, the latest release is there instead of the tri motor, it's going to be four motors and then they're going to add the crab walking. Like the oh, the, we can go like sideways and stuff. Sideways, yeah. and it's gonna be uh, all steering. The back tires are gonna turn too. Oh wow! They, uh, I think, who is it that came out with that first? Was it a uh, Rivian when they first I, showed it? Anyway, the, the... I, I think I think so. I I, I think yeah. the whole idea. Well, if I remember correctly, back in the days, uh, GNC they had a Denali pickup truck. I think it was a Denali, but it had the back tires that would turn. And it oh, didn't wow. catch I didn't much. Know, uh, yeah, this was know, like years ago. Oh, 10 plus years. Oh, wow. 10 plus. I didn't even know that was a thing for uh, um, rear, uh, uh, rear drive trucks, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah, they do it because uh, your, your U turn, your U turns are going to be a lot tighter. 
Mm. So because the you know the chassis and everything's so much longer, you get right. a, a tighter U-turn. So they did it. I think I th it was very little. It was very little, but it made a difference. And I remember they did it. And now all these electric trucks are doing it. And Elon's like, well, you know, we launched uh, our, the Cybertruck three years ago, but since all these updates are coming on, the crab walk, the rear wheel, the more motors, Elon said, fuck it, let's let's bring it out. Let's get the, right. uh, let's, let's add all the features. I've, I've, I've definitely seen a sports car do that before. Like when it's turning into a, a, a curve really fast, the rear wheel is slightly like the camber of the wheel to turn also. Yeah. With the, uh, the front wheels. Yeah, I have seen it, but I, I never thought that the... Uh, the trucks were doing that before electric because that's the first time i ever well it's not that i didn't think it was possible it's just that was the first time i was exposed to it so i, yeah. I never thought uh gm was doing that but that's that's cool very that, cool that's really cool uh, when did you start riding uh i started riding in 2012 first bike was a suzuki m50 then i upgraded to the 109 short, shortly after that i think like a year later so how'd you get into riding uh my uncle well i i kind of always had a a thing for it. I rode dirt bikes like in middle school, like once or twice. Nothing like I had one, but I rode it at like camp. And then when I got older, my uncle bought a, uh, I think it was like a 2000, early 2000s Honda Shadow. And he was riding. And then um, I found out that he was. And then he showed me how to ride around like 2011. And then by that time, I saved up enough money and bought my own in 2012. Nice. So, been riding about nine, 10, 10 years almost. Nice man, and then you've been taking a lot of safety courses or classes or just all. No, I uh, I kind of always had that natural ability to like ride four wheelers and not whiskey throttle and stuff like that because I play play a lot of video games. So I always had kind of good hand eye coordination. But I uh, when I first got my first bike, you know, uh, after he showed me how to ride, he basically put me on the back road and said, "This is how you ride it. Go learn how to ride it," and that's what I did. When I got my own, the very first day I uh, got it, we brought it back from from Georgia. And that night, I literally rode on the highway. Uh, no, no gear. I had a helmet on and threw me straight off into the deep end. And that and that was that. But later on, um, I wanted to start test riding bikes. So that's when I had to get the M endorsement on my license. And then I wanted a decrease in my insurance. So I did end up taking a safety course, probably like I think uh, maybe a year and a half into my riding career. But um. I think uh, I haven't taken one since, though. It's been probably six or seven years since I've taken one. No, yeah. no. The last time I took one was in uh, 20, 2016. That's the last time I took one. But it wasn't for like, I, I, I think there was like, there's this, uh, this association that does that, that used to do it like once a year. Um, they have like the beginners course, the little uh, figure eight and the advanced course. But now uh, they haven't done it in a while. But that's last. I think 2016 is the last time I did. I did one. Yeah. Did you do it for uh, did, did you pick up any new skills from it or it's just kind of like. You just did it. Just um, to do it? I just did it just to do it. But then I got on the advanced course and that's when I learned. Uh, it was more about the. Uh, that's when I learned kind of how to come to a stop without put, putting my feet down and I can kind of like speed up to a stop and then immediately stop and then keep going kind of deal feather the clutch and everything and then the figure eight was pretty uh, interesting but um I haven't been able to do a figure eight on my 109 uh mostly because I don't want to drop it <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah I mean there's always some something to learn on bikes but um I uh I haven't been on been on a course in a while so I'm definitely due for a refresher would you agree that the, the bigger the bike is, is, it's kind of like for me, it's easier to do the figure eight or the, or the tight circle on a bigger bike than a smaller bike? Yeah. So when I did my figure eight training, it was on a 2016 Suzuki GSX S1000. And for me, trying to throw a, a smaller bike that that's that you're able to essentially knee drag on in a figure eight because it tends to lock the handlebars more easier versus right. a big touring bike. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. The, the bigger touring bikes for me are a little bit easier to throw over too because they naturally just like to fall over. But like and a sports fall, bike, yeah. you have to kind of, you really have to get off of the bike for it to really counterbalance. Yeah, yeah. counterbalance. Yeah. So I that's something that I, I, I wasn't comfortable with at the time. And plus that bike didn't have any engine guards on it. So I didn't want to drop it either. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Right, I, yeah. I, I, I and then there's that, that whole thing with the um the back brake. When you hold the back brake and you're on the tight turn, the bike kind of stands up on its own, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You like trail braking? Yeah. 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 That's what it's called, trail braking. Yeah. And that that's something that people. It, it's funny because uh, I, I had a streak glide. I have a streak glide now, but back in the days, like ten plus years ago, I had a streak glide, and I was gonna do uh, the DMV test. And this guy was telling me that, um, hey man, I got a scooter. Give me a six pack of beer, and you can use my scooter. So the day oh, wow. of my DMV test, I called him up. He didn't answer the phone. And I was like, shit, man. Well, you know what? Let me just try with the streak light because this guy's not answering. And, and this is my appointment. So I went with the streak light. And it's funny because people see a bigger bike and they're like, you're going to do it on that? Like, it, it's so right. mind blowing to people. Like, really? And I was like, well, I don't have a choice. And when I did it, I was like, this is pretty easy because I've been riding my streak light for years really at that point. So I, I passed it and everybody's just wow and then i was like you know what this is way easier than a dyna or, or most bikes now i got a bmw and the bmw's i mean it's so light to turn around it's amazing and have you ridden the gs's i have not i haven't ridden no? a single gs i think the only bmw i've ridden is the r18 and the uh long time ago the r the r uh what is it the uh the r90 yeah those are the yeah. only bmws i've ridden which adventure bikes have you ridden just the pan america that's it really that's it that's crazy and then that that, that what, what's your thoughts on that oh i think it's incredible man you love i think it? it's a really fun bike oh yeah i mean like like i said in my video that that bike opened my world up that it opened me up to a world i didn't even know i crave man adventure riding is amazing it's, it's amazing it's, it's fucking outstanding but i i'll tell you that when you have a bike like that if if your first bike is a pan america or uh the uh, gs it's like the amenities and the features that those bikes have makes it so much easier. Like there's Absolutely. they're so advanced that uh it makes it makes it where anybody that doesn't know how to ride ride those bikes on those trails can ride those bikes on those trails. So what what I catch myself doing on the GS versus the the Harley is the Harley I'm more focused on riding, you know, on the streets. I, I it's it's just it's a street bike. Mm. the gs i've caught myself riding on the sidewalk dirt paths oh, wow. hills you know because in la when there's a lot of traffic i'm like mm. uh, there's a, there's a sidewalk right there i'll yeah. take it. i'll take and i've passed I police officers i've passed police officers and they're just like looking at me like you can't be doing that and i'm like i'm sorry there's just so much traffic boom and it, you can go anywhere it's like a it's like a monster truck yeah it's like a monster truck you just go everywhere yeah, it's uh it's it's definitely different. Um some people asked me if I would have bought one and I said I would. Um and of course like I said I don't have a lot of experience with adventure bikes, but that bar really I mean that bike really set the bar high for me. But even then if I were to buy one now, it would mostly be on the street. And honestly, yeah. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want it to ride on the street. I want to ride it on dirt. And around here we don't have a lot of trails for me to ride that 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 type of bike on dirt at least a bike that costs that much it can do so, so much right i would have to definitely get something a lot smaller and a lot cheaper for me to justify even having one yeah um but but, but you'd be surprised how comfortable those bikes are on on the road on, oh for sure no it's like not to cut you off but uh the one that's the ones that we had had the knobby tires on it yeah and it Dude, like cruise control, heated grips, windscreen The you know, I was right in the pocket of the, uh, so I didn't get wind buffeting. Dude, it was, it was perfect. I was perfectly comfortable on it, but, um, you know, for 19 grand, I was just like, nah, I, I can't, I can't justify this thing, man. Even if it's on the street, I just can't. Cause I got two bikes already that do, that will serve the same purpose. Yeah. But, um, cause I, cause the majority of the bikes that they're selling of those Pan Americas, they're going to be ridden on the street. Most, you know, that's, that's just how it is. Absolutely. But, yeah. There's not many um, people that are going to ride, go off road. No, hundred percent. But it's just like for you to be able to, uh, have you experienced the, uh, active, the semi active, active suspension on it? No, I haven't rode the Pan America. Oh, you haven't. Okay. So th to me, the coolest thing about it was the suspension. And from what they said, they're the only manufacturer that can do that right now. Uh, outside of, I guess, uh, what is it? Uh, 
that super electric sports bike was it damon that has the active suspension yeah, yeah, yeah. the pegs we'll and all that kind of that. stuff do that it wasn't the sport mode yeah and adventure mode and- yeah so when you're on the thing outside of the whole like when you get up to a stoplight and it lets the bike down like one to two inches to put your feet on the ground What's interesting is when you, you know, go from off road because by default, the bike is in off road mode. And I think you can change that to like, okay, I want it to be in sport mode when when I turn the bike on. But, you know, you're, you know, the suspension soft, it's bouncy. But when you switch over to sport mode, it instantly firms up. So you don't have to worry about like manually changing it by hand, like trying to set the sag rate and everything. So um, that's why I said, like, it's crazy how you can just press a button. And it changes the entire character of the bike, the suspension and everything. So you're on the road, you know, you hit a bump and it's just like you feel nothing. Yeah. And then when you want to you see some curves coming up, you just press the button and change the sport mode. It makes it stiff and it, you know, you go through the curves, get stiffer suspension, you get out. You just, then you see a dirt road, press the button and now you're back on the dirt road. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's like I said, that that bike is um, it's my only experience, but. The, the the bar is just so damn high but it's just like it it just has multiple personalities um i'll be curious to see what they do with that suspension uh system and other bikes um but uh yeah it's just, it's just, it, ha- it just has a lot of convenient stuff to it you you got you got to try the BMW R1250 GS. Oh, for sure. You, you have to because it has the same thing with the suspension, where it has a mm-hmm. dynamic mode, race mode, road mode, um, off road, and then it's got the rain mode. So, and then it's got the traction right. control. It's got uh, the suspension adjust, like I believe two, two, three inches. So you know you could ride it just so, up. So that's the part that's interesting. So Harley said they were the only ones that had some part of an active suspension. So what part does the BMW have? Yeah, I, I I don't I don't understand that statement because the BMW, if you look into um, does and, it and if I was more does it me, auto does it auto let up and down when you come yeah. up to a light? Oh yeah, I swear to you, that's what they that's what they said in the, in the briefing. Okay. I don't know why they would have said that. Yeah, you, you got you got auto mode. So let's say that I'm just riding alone, it'll adjust, mm. and then if I get a passenger, it will also adjust. And and the difference mm. is, I want to say. I want to say like 2.5 inches in distance mm. because, I, you know, I'll go from my tippy toes to like flat, on, you know, heel on the floor. Um, and then you got the the road comfort, uh, comfort mode. I think it's road yeah. comfort, rain and dirt and dynamic. And then there's a chip that you get that's mm. under your seat. Once you plug in that chip, you get that mm. race dynamic mode, which is, I mean, it's race like, dynamic. yeah. Exactly. It's dy- it's dynamic. And then you have the traction control, which if you're riding in the rain, if a tire is slipping, it'll correct. And then you got the, yeah. obviously the same Brimbo ABS, um, heated grips. I didn't know that the Pan America came with heated grips. That's awesome. Now, I don't know if it comes with heated grips, but mm-hmm. they gave us all specials. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty sure the special came with heated grips, but not the uh, not the base. Yeah, I don't think the base came with it, but I'm, I'm sure the base comes with a uh, cruise control though. For adventure Definitely. bikes, I think pricing they did a great job. I I, I think I think it's right on point. You know, uh, nineteen because if you look at the Ducati, yeah. the Multistradas, the Hyper Mozarts, the BMWs, you know, any of the KTM's, Duke, they're they're a little bit more than that. So I I, I think price point it, it's it's good. Um, I want to ride it, but at the same time, I'm kind of like biased. I'm like I have my streak line. I have the BMW. For yeah, this. I mean, you got the best of both worlds. I mean, you can't say like, you know, you don't. I mean, it's not like you don't want to ride it, but I mean, you have a Harley. You already own one, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like my like you don't have anything to prove. He's like, right, all right, I got my BMW. Light, I'm not gonna buy one. Right, my streak lights, my streak light, and, and my off roads, my BMW. You know, yeah. There's a. Are you familiar with Rawhide? Yeah, I mean that's that's what we were. Uh, oh, that's where you guys went. Nice. Yeah. So. Z- Zakar stands for Zombie Apocalyptic yeah, yeah, Compound yeah. at Raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were there with Jim. Uh, Jim is the, Jim's the owner, owner, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jim he was Hyde. There with, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, I was. I, I had him on the podcast, and he was. Um, he kind of mentioned right right before they were going to launch the uh, the Pan Americas. He was like, mm. I, "I can't say, but I can say, but we're getting the Pan Americas." And I was like, "That's awesome." Yeah, he's awesome, dude. Yeah, he. Uh, the day that.
the castle. You, uh oh, oh, is that uh, key? And um, you know, um, uh, he was telling us about the tires and how we have to like counter steer off the bike going into a curve and all that kind of stuff. So he, uh, he, he, he told us a lot of things. Very, 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 very nice guy. Very knowledgeable, Jim, and his patience yeah. is amazing. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, every everybody there, man. They were. Um, I said this in my video that uh, everybody there was excited that we were there as we were to be there, and at the same time, they were excited to show us, you know, all their you know teachings and stuff, and we were all there just like absorbing what they wanted to tell us. So it wasn't like you know they felt impatient that we we're falling off the bike or we had to add something multiple times. They were everybody there at the car is just awesome. Like yeah. everybody's awesome. Was, uh, did, did you get a chance to meet Robert glass? Yeah. He's one of the trainers. He's one of the, yeah, he's an awesome. Yeah. Trainer. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. He was a big part of my uh, training and my video, man. He uh, gave me so much support. Yeah. Like when I was, when I was doing the breaking drills, I kept messing up, but so we had to do like three breaking drills where we tested with the ABS on um the abs off to the rear when we tested just the front brake and just the, the rear brake but i will always miss always mess with the body position uh so when i'm braking like the first time i i stopped but i didn't hold the clutch in and yeah. then the last time on he, he was always at the end so i would always just the first two people would tell me what to do to fix it then when i got to him i would have er, everything uh kind of dialed in and then he would congratulate me on it and uh tell me the uh give me some words of encouragement so no, rob's props. rob's amazing yeah yeah he yeah. He's, he's dope uh, we had such a blast we were here in um i want to say by santa clarita and in, 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 you know california okay. so their, their facility out there is fun fun and we we did a training where it was interesting it was the first of its kind where it was it was like a business development you know class and yeah. then afterwards off-roading you know, so we, we oh dang yeah it, it it was it was to help you get to the it's stuff like that I was learning at Pepperdine it was almost better in a sense and then to afterwards eat good food and then go riding you, you couldn't beat that so I, I uh -huh. want to sign up for another of those classes. What's your favorite motorcycle you've ridden? Period. Overall, oh uh, I know that's hard, hmm. but or let's just do it by category. I say my favorite is probably the X Diablo. X Diablo. I'm just a big. I'm just a big muscle guy. Uh, a, a muscle cruiser guy. Um, definitely the X Diablo. Um, a bike that shocked me, and was more fun than I thought it would be was the R18. I haven't got um, to that one yet either. Yeah, I didn't. I truthfully did not expect to like that bike as much as I did. That bike was really uh, surprising, and it wasn't so much the power. It's just. It was more nimble than it looks. The center of gravity on it works well, and I just think the damn thing is beautiful with the exposed drive shaft. Um, what else? Um, Did you get to look at uh, the Arch Motors? Talking with the SNS power plant. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Keanu I Reeves probably, brand. Huh? Keanu, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Keanu I Reeves mean, brand. I have a the. Velamaki. The whole reason I ride uh, ride with Velamaki bags is because of Keanu Reeves. I saw him in a picture uh, riding an arch motorcycle in public on one of those freaking tabloid sites that takes pictures of celebrities. Yeah. And I was like, damn, he's on the arch. That uh, the uh, blue KRTG one. And then I saw that backpack. I saw the X clam. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I went <laughs> and looked it up. I was like, oh snap, Velamaki. That's cool. So now I have Velamaki gear. But uh, one of my dream bikes is a KRTG one. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like an $80,000 bike, but it's just like, you know, that keeps me motivated to to one day get to that point. But I would love to be able to at least ride one just to say I did it because outside of being a journalist, regular people don't get a chance to ride them. So, well, here, here's the deal. I think they're at like number 68. The company's been around for 10 years and mm -hmm. I think they're at number 68. They've only built 68 of them or something like that. Oh, I, my man. last guest that was on the podcast, he has number 44. And every time I ride with him, it, it's like my streak light looks good. But like when we roll up, they don't even see my streak light. They go straight to that bike. And hearing him talk about what they do is 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 fucking amazing. You know, number one, they bring in like a thousand pounds of alum, an aluminum block. 
and they shave yeah. like 250 pounds or something to make parts for your bike. You get If you're in California, you get to meet the builders, you get the people, they take your measurements, then you get to meet Keanu Reeves. Like, it, there's so much. Oh, you cool. do? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I would lose my, yeah, I would cool, lose bro. my so shit. So you're, you're, you're paying, imagine, you're paying, you're paying 80, 90,000 for a bike yeah. built around you, owned by Keanu mm-hmm. Reeves, and then they do the the yearly um, owner, owner rider. Right. Yeah, the owner rider rides. And, and it's like, you know how many companies, like, for example, like Omega will make a watch, and they'll be like, limited edition, only 15,000 made. That's a lot of fucking right. watches. But when you look at this, and there's only 68 ever made, imagine having some, one of 100 of something, you know, this valuable and this badass. And everything's top notch. That that's that's definitely on my on my list. But then it fucks you up too because then you start thinking eighty grand. That's like three four motorcycles. You know that. Yeah. That's like everything I got right now. Right now I got the GS, the Streak Light, and a Live Wire. And I'm like, would I change all three of those for an Arch? But the more I see this, I'm like, I almost. I think so. I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm I'm really considering it because it, it's. I have never seen a bike turn more heads than an arch motor. Man, I haven't even seen one in person yet. Because there's only. But you probably, million. but you won't see them out east as much as you would uh, in in LA where where they make them though. But yeah, but I, I, I I'm on Malibu every weekend, and, and I've only seen. If it's not my boy's bike, I've only mm-hmm. seen it twice. Just right by me, like real quick, like okay. again, like, that was an arch motor, but I haven't seen that thing anywhere. And and this is you know Malibu every weekend, so it, it's it's pretty wow. unique. It's it's definitely one of the most unique bikes out there. What about electric bikes? Have you ridden any of those? <laughs> no, I uh, wanted to. I had that. Well, I had the opportunity at the uh, motorcycle show, but I was there for press, yeah. and I could have ridden stuff, but I was so focused on recording and filming and stuff that I didn't get a chance to ride anything. But I did ride one of the I think the Yamaha electric bicycles, but to this day, I have not been on a live wire. Haven't been on a zero, but I've filmed all of their press when I was there. Didn't ride a single one. Yeah. Yeah, live wire is um, very cool. Very cool. No clutch, no gears. Just get on, you know, flip. So you said your own one, right? Yeah. Do you yeah. regret buying it? You know, kind of, to be honest. Not I- because of what it is, but just like has the novelty of it worn off yet. Here, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I'll tell you my scenario. Uh, I, I got it for the wife, and she was going to mm-hmm. ride it. She got a little intimidated. So after she got a little intimidated, we, we parked it. Funny enough, we par- put it in the living room. So it was just sitting in the living room like mm-hmm. a piece of artwork. So that part was That's cool. awesome. It was awesome. That part's cool. And That's shit, cool. people. And I bought it after Livewire separated from Harley Davidson. So Ooh. they dropped ten grand in price, which was perfect. Yours mm-hmm. just... George is technically whole value, though. Uh, absolutely. No, 100%. Right. So picked it up in the living room. It was awesome. The BMW, I took it in to get service, and I told him to check my uh, Clearwaters. And the Clearwaters LEDs, I had the Dixies. Are you familiar with those? Uh, I've heard of the brand, brand before. Yeah, they make some of the best uh, fog lamps and, and LED mm. lamps in the market. They're amazing. Anyways, the Dixies are the biggest ones they have. And long story short, they had to take off the lights and send them to Clearwater. And I was waiting for them to come back. That took yeah. almost two months. So my BMW wow. was out for two months. During that time, the Harley gave me an issue. And I was out from the Harley almost a month. Damn. So the only thing left now is the live wire. So I said, fuck it. This is an opportunity to start riding the live wire. I got scared. I got scared because... I ride a lot of highway and you get 70, mm. 80 miles on highway. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to ride somewhere and I'm going to have to charge. And and I think the mm. charging factor is so little that for that reason, and that's one of the main reasons it, it didn't take off that well before anyways. Plus the price point was at 33. Now it's at 22. Um, yeah. So do I love it? It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun in my living room. It's badass. Yeah. Other than that, I, I don't know. I, I do regret it. I do regret it. I am looking for a way to sell it or trade it in or flip it or do something with it. So, Interesting. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it yet. I'm sure in two, three years, it's going to be badass. Yeah. But 
you know, like if you go to Orange County, you're you're, you're gonna have to find a, a charging station. And I'm new to the whole EV thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So finding a station and seeing how slow the chargers charge right now, it's not the time. It's not the time. It's good to know. Yeah, but I'm out here in the stick, so we might have one charging station per 100 miles. <laughs> Uh, but and plus, you can't freaking use the dang line wire on the uh Tesla charger network, so no, um, you know, that's that's the bummer. But if they wanted to increase the the wow factor of it, that would be something really awesome to see. But of course, Tesla's gonna have that where they don't want anybody else on it, so no, there's a company called ChargePoint, I think they have the most you know, chargers throughout the, the country and, and they're growing. So they're, they're just kind of slow. That's the only problem with that. And the, the line. Let me ask you this. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, no, no. It's, it's just that they're expanding. So they're, they're, they are competing okay. with uh, Tesla. I, I, I was going to say, uh, I had a conversation with my friends about this. Um, the problem that I have with electric right now, especially when it comes to, uh, well, not, not necessarily motorcycles, is that eventually there's going to have to be some type of, regulation i think because if everybody's making their own charging networks it's going to be fragmentation in the electric network uh uh, the the electric space because like right now a gas station doesn't care what make a model you have they just have gas right right but there's no electric stations it's just everybody has their own proprietary network right now and it's like at what point does it become a burden or is putting a strain on the entire I guess rollout of electric. Uh, if assuming charging point or GM doesn't build theirs out, because Tesla obviously isn't going to let anybody, you know, use this. But imagine like you got Lucid, Rivian, Porsche, <laughs> Tesla, uh, GM. All of they all have their own charging network. No, no, they, like, they 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 use they use a, an adapter. Like for example, I, I have a Tesla. And mm. there's an adapter that like there's a gas station down the street from me and it's a gas mm. station, but behind it, they put charging ports and it's not Tesla charging ports. It's just the generic ones like charge point. Char- well, and then how long does that take though? It's not, it's not fast. It's not a supercharger. Right. So, okay. so I also have one at my place. It, it takes mm. about six hours. It takes <laughs> about six hours. But if you go to the mall, they have the, the superchargers for Tesla and there it's about an hour and hour and 30 minutes, you know, for a full charge, you know, from like 20 miles all the way to 290 miles, you know? Yeah. So you, you could do it, but you're right. It, it's just not convenient and they're going to have to regulate it at some point. But I think there's more companies that are trying to make it so they can charge everybody's car, you know, cause it's not Audi making the charger. It's not, you know, right. whatever. It's not these companies. It's it's just a company that's trying to get faster. They're getting ahead of it. They're getting ahead of it. So yeah. I think once they get those speeds up, it's going to be better. But one time, it, it, it can suck. It really can. Like on the Tesla, it was amazing that I don't have to go to a gas station ever again. You know, like right. a gas station sucks. You know, now I don't have to worry about that. But one time I was in Long Beach and I found the charge port, you know, charge station. Number one, there was no Wi-Fi. Mobile service sucked. And it was the slowest charge in the world. It was like, it was like, fifteen minutes for like a mile or something like that. I was like, this is oh. stupid. Yeah, this was stupid, and I had nothing to do. Then I was hungry, and there was like no food places I could walk to in the meantime. So yeah. there, there, there is. It needs to get better. And I, and I live in a you know a little town called Los Angeles. You know where I'm having these kind of problems. <laughs> you know, right. so it's like, you know, if it's happening oh, in my village, imagine you know for the other people what's going on. But but it, it, it's definitely there's a lot of fucking cool factors to it. And like I said, the simple fact that you don't have to go to a gas station because my other car is a, is a truck, a Silverado, and mm. when I'm riding that every day, it's it's driving that. That's every three and a half days, a hundred bucks to fill up. <laughs> We're almost at six I bucks. Yeah, muscle sedan. So I I feel your pain. Yeah, yeah. How much is yeah. gas out there? Yeah. Uh, for ninety three, it's uh right at four gallons. Four dollars. I'm at four four dollars a, a gallon. gallon. We're at six bucks. Woo. Six bucks a gallon. And that's not even for ninety three uh ninety one, right? Yeah. That's for oh that's for God. that's for eighty nine or something like that. Oh dear. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. There's no way I could do it. Did you see that? And I, I get 12 in the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. I'm like at 13.5. In the okay, city. so, yeah, we're in the same boat. Yeah. Ugh. Did you see that Chinese guy on TikTok? He goes, putting gas in California, and he, like, clicks it two times, and then he looks at the price, like, 60 bucks. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't yeah, see that. Oh, that shit's that. so funny. That's such a good oh, TikTok man. video, but it's the truth, man. Shit's fucking terrible right now. There's one thing I will say about living in the Southeast, man, is uh, stuff like that we don't really have too much of an issue with, like gas. Uh, but in traffic, God, I hate traffic. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, if, if, if I had to pay six bucks in Alabama, cause it, the cost of living here is so much lower, six bucks, dude, that would, and I had to do that every three days. I would just, I would sell my muscle car. There, there's just no way. Cause, uh, I drive it every day. I mean, it's, it's, it's a grocery getter. It's, it's a four door. So, yeah. um, but no, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, it's it's crazy to think that if you live outside of California, like like you do, if you decided to move to California, all of a sudden you have to pay thirteen percent more in state tax on your income. Really? Oh yeah, I did not know that. So just oh be, my god! Just, so so imagine you're making whatever you make, and then just because you want to live in California, you have to pay thirteen percent more. Give away 13% of what you make. Imagine, would you move somewhere knowing you have to give away 13% of what you make? More? No. <laughs> it's like, no. It doesn't make sense. Now, we're from California, so that's that's all we know. But if, you, right. if, if you're from like Nevada or Oregon or Washington where you don't pay state taxes and you have to come to California and give up 13% automatically, that's a shit deal. Mm. Plus, you got to pay $6 per gas, you know, per, you know, per, per gallon. Plus rents, plus you got to deal with traffic. It, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't fucking you got, make sense. And you, and you guys have earthquakes. And well, yeah, we and we got earthquakes. We got earthquakes. We should get hurricanes and uh, tornadoes like we do. But yeah, but that's every year. Like we last time we had an earthquake. Shit, I can't even remember. I want to say yeah. I want to say ninety four. I mean, like something big. I we felt something right, right, like a yeah. few months ago. But that's true. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, but, but it's well, wildfires, you get wildfires and smog. We, we get a lot of wildfires. Yeah. Smog's gotten good. It's dangerous stuff, man. Yeah. Smog got a lot better. Eighties and nineties oh, was really, I, I mean, up. I like, I like visiting uh, California, but um, definitely when I'm there, I mean, it's traffic, traffic isn't that bad, but it's from, bad. from what I've experienced, but uh, I'm just not used to, I'm used to be able to getting to where I'm going pretty quickly yeah like my commute to work's 10 minutes yeah and that's driving across town versus it like me going to atlanta and it's taking me an hour i have to leave like 30 minutes or 45 minutes before work to make it i guess to even get halfway to work on time like that's something that i'm just like not used to <laughs> yeah but, like but, i can leave i can leave home at 7 45 7 50 and make it to work on time yeah, you're 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 not leaving anywhere at seven. You're not making it anywhere <laughs> at seven forty five to anywhere. And ten minutes is ten miles, right? No, ten minutes is like uh probably, yeah. It's it's, it's about 10, 10, 10 miles, like seven or something. See, yeah. Ten minutes, when you talk to somebody in California, when you say ten minutes, that's like two miles. So oh, when, no, when somebody's man, like, how far, you know, how many miles is it to this place? You're like, it's about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Well, how many, uh, what's that translate in miles? About two miles, two, three miles. That's what's fucking crazy. That's, that's another reason I hate, I hate going to, uh, Texas. Texas is the exact same way. I, uh, I love visiting. Uh, I have, I have friends there that ride bikes. I sometimes I'll just fly in and we hang out or I ride the bike up, uh, over, but you know, it's Texas doesn't even have a lot of traffic. Yeah. Texas is just big as fuck. Like you might be driving 45 minutes just to get to where everything is. Cause it's or where so you're big. going. Yeah. Yeah. And what's crazy is like in Austin, you'll just be like driving, you'll see an Ikea and two blocks down the road, there's a freaking cow pasture. You're just like, what the hell? What's going and on? You might see a skyscraper. And then next to that, you'll see an old cottage. Like it's just like, Austin's a weird place, That's man. But Texas is just, it's just huge. Texas is freaking huge, man. It's, you're just forever driving. You could have like a neighbor that lives like, what, 15 minutes away, 10 minutes away. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, and it's not everywhere. Obviously, you have like suburbs and cul-de-sacs and stuff, but yeah, like Texas, Texas is there's not one thing there. It's just like you can't have like progressive neighborhoods or farms. You got like all of that shit mixed together. <laughs> yeah. just, all of it's just mixed in in weird places. That's fucking insane. I gotta check out Texas. I drove by. Texas here. is cool. Yeah, Dude, it's beautiful. Like, yeah, I mean. You're downtown, skyscrapers, farms, and then next thing you know, five miles away, there's a fucking waterfall. Like, it's just in nature. It's just, it's just weird. And also, you, it's a weird place. I mean that in a good way, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can carry your guns out there. Fucking yeah, concealed like, cam- Yeah, it's fucking amazing. Barbecue's amazing. Everything's just bigger. Their portions are bigger. Food's bigger. The personalities there, uh, the people there are really nice. The people there are really nice. So. It's, it's funny. I, I was I was in Dubai a few years ago, and, mm. and there was this couple from Texas. And they, were, they, you know, they were like, "Oh God!" They say in Texas things are bigger, but compared to Dubai, not really, because <laughs> Dubai. Oh yeah, no, is Dubai so is fucking insane. Everything's extra there. What, it was funny the running into people from Texas. World, yeah, yeah, the tallest building in the world. It, it's just everybody's fucking competing and stuff. What about lane splitting? There's no lane splitting where you're at, right? No, and even if they legalize it tomorrow, I will wait a year and probably two before I even attempt it, because the people here give no fucks. <laughs> well, that that's that's here's the thing. I I can't imagine riding without lane splitting. I I lane split fucking oh man all day all night fucking. I, I feel more comfortable lane splitting than anything else. That's the honest truth. Well, here's the thing, you guys. So lanes lane splitting where I'm at. It's not as bad because the traffic isn't, oh, not having it isn't as bad because we don't have as much traffic. Yeah. But the people here, if you jump line, they will open car doors on you. I know that, that, that's, that was so that's, point. they, they are very just selfless and disrespectful as far as traffic goes. So they, if the law was tomorrow, federal, uh, federal law that said lane splitting is, you know, legal nationwide. I would just go, yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing I'm not doing it where I'm from. But when I was in uh LA um a few years back when I had an Indian chief and I flew out there and pick, picked up a bike, I was just riding normally. I was like, yeah, I'm just sitting in traffic. And then next thing you know, the sport bike just comes flying past me up uh uh lane splitting, and I was like, Shit, I forgot I can do that here. Yeah. And then since then I was just lane splitting. So I was like, Yeah, this this is amazing. Cause every cause everybody there expects you to do it. One hundred percent. So you kind of just get out the way. 100%. But here in Alabama, they just like, oh no! If I'm in traffic, you're gonna wait with me, even though it's 95 degrees outside. I'm like, dude, I'm cooking over here. Come on. So, yeah, I I I I got a taste of that in in Vegas. Uh, I was there with Eagle Riders, and we had like a big event, okay. and then we did this crazy ride. And as we're doing this ride, we got a hundred bikes, and I saw like two cars forcing their way in between the bikes. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like that doesn't happen in California. And I ride up to the lady's window and I bang on her window while riding. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? She's like, I'm trying to get the fuck in there. Move. And I was like, oh, fuck. And she forced her way in there. And I was like, this sucks. Afterwards, we were uh, a buddy of mine. We were like, let's ride back to L.A. We started riding back to L.A. on the 15. And it was raining. And as it started raining, I was and there was a lot of traffic because it was a Sunday. So Sunday, just to give you an idea, Vegas to L.A. is about three and a half to four hours. On mm. Sunday, it's five to six hours because of the traffic, because everybody's leaving, right? Right. So I was like, split lanes? He's like, yeah, let's split lanes. As we were splitting lanes, people were fucking aggressive. If they saw us coming, they would jump in front of us. They would fucking scoot their cars. I would be up ahead, no problem, but they would block my boy off. I was like, this is fucking yeah. ridiculous. I've, I've never experienced that except for like in Nevada. And I hear that's yeah. how it is in Texas and other states but i can't i can't live without lane splitting i'll be honest it, it makes no sense to be fucking taking up a car spot and being stuck in traffic oh, sure it makes no sense yeah especially when it's hot as hell man you're just sitting especially. there like baking and like because i ride with gear all the time no matter what the uh the weather is and you're just sitting there at a stoplight just sweating your ass off and they're just sitting there with a cool ac and then they look at you and you're just like okay i'm gonna lane split and then they just like no uh, i don't no, mm-mm. You don't you don't lane split. No, you sit here with me, dude. Come on, yeah. People are, yeah. People are crazy, man. People are definitely crazy. How, how many months of the year are you, can you ride out there? I ride all twelve. All twelve. So it's not yeah. it's not extreme. 
weather like no snow. so the coldest the, i mean it, it snows where i am maybe once a year yeah and and if it that once may be like Like we say, you guys are pussies. I was like, man, it's relative. So, um, yeah. if you're freaking cold, you're just cold. <laughs> no, that's it. No, it's funny because well, I'll go, I'll go to Miami like, like during right now, you know, January, February, and, mm. and I'll go swimming in the ocean, and and the locals look at me like you're crazy. It's freezing. I'm like, this is warm compared to like because our ocean's cold. Yeah, Pacific so much colder. But it, yeah, you're right. It's just it, it's, it's it just depends. I mean, whatever you're coming from. Oh yeah. How do you do in the heat? Oh, this, so I'm pretty <laughs> used to the heat, man. The heat's the humidity here is fucking awful. Uh, we have over like 100% humidity most days in the summer. So you go out there, man, and you you you're just a, a a sauna box, just just sweating. And a lot of people around here don't wear gear, but when I had my accident, uh, I didn't have a jacket on, so I was like, I'm not gonna get caught slipping again. So regardless, I've just learned to regulate my body temperature as best as i can wearing base layers and continuing to hydrate and stuff so it's less bearable on me yeah oh uh, yeah yeah it's, it's more tolerable to be in the heat but i wear my gear year round all the time i'm as hot uh it gets up to like 95 100 and like i said it's just pure just swamp swamp butt swamp ass Gear sticking to you. You get up. You sit on the seat for like three hours. Your butt feel, feels raw. Everything's just sticky. <laughs> but it's better than hitting that hot ass tarmac. So, oh my god! Uh, what, happened, what happened with your accident? Man, I had a damn tank wobble at like seventy miles an hour on the Indian Scout, and yeah. the bike threw me off on the interstate. Kept and the bike once it corrected itself, it just kept going up the highway. Didn't even fall fall over. Went through the oh. bushes and fell over. So, so it got the wobble and you fell off it and it just kept going? Yeah. So, I mean, if, I don't know if you've ever seen the Indian Scout. Or... Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the damn thing, the seat's only like this damn big. So it's yeah, not, yeah. I didn't have, I basically just lost my, my seating and I kind of just fell off on the side and bike corrected and kept going. And so, you weren't wearing any gear? No, I had my helmet and gloves, broke three fingers, had a fuck ton of road rash and yeah. That's, that's the happened. worst man the road rash is the worst oh yeah i mean especially when you can't like take a bath and you have to have somebody like literally mm. wipe you because your fingers are broken and <laughs> you can't reach back because your shoulder blades are just full of road rash and it hurts to it hurts to even breathe yeah so i was just like i'm 
never going through this again. So I was like, if it means me learning how to hydrate better and not get dehydrated and not get over uh, heated, I would just have to do that because yeah. that shit sucks. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. Uh, and then sucks. talking about your channel, what, what, what's what's the goal? What can people expect and then look forward to? Are you trying to do like a, an episode a week, a month? Are you going to start, you know? I am trying versus- to, I'm trying to put out the best video I can without getting burned out and without getting bored, which means that if I put out one this week, I put one out. If I put one out the next two weeks, I put one out. If I don't get one out this month, I just don't get it out. But when I do put it out, it'll be the best thing I ever put out. But I'm not going to kill myself over it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I will tell you this. Brandon Picasso is going to get his eight hours of sleep. Damn right. Because I'm, right. I mean, but. But but is that, a, is that a goal? Is that a goal like to make it better than your last one and continue? Oh, yeah, always. So me at this stage, um, I have 20,000 su- subscribers, but my channel is it's a slow growth. Uh, I just I just don't grow 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 fast. It's not that I feel like I don't put out put out good content. I think I put out phenomenal content, but it's just um my channel just it just it just grows slow. So I might get you know thirty thousand views on the video, but that subscriber number is just like eh, it just goes up slowly. And I've just gotten to the point where I'm just like eh, if it grows, it grows. But if hey, if long as it brings in the views, that's all that matters. Because that's all that matters. At the end of the day, the subscriber number is just a vanity number so i mean it, uh the first press event that i got a chance to go to was with indian uh back in march and then harley davidson invited me out so the brands are they apparently they they see something in me so at this point i don't i don't really care about the number <laughs> long, yeah, as long as right. the views come in so so again my goal is to make the best video i can um on my own terms as far as you know how i feel i'm not gonna put my uh my health at risk like I used to because I I was so I was so stuck on just trying to grow the thing like I want to get this thing a hundred thousand subs and then you know stand up to 11 30 12 o'clock and, and it's not to say I don't do that like this weekend when I was trying to get that Pan America video I, I did stay up to uh 12 12 30 to finalize it but I slept in later because I realized that you know I still have a full-time job and I'm still doing this on the side this thing is nowhere near where I needed to be for me to go full time. So I, you know, just realized like I can't kill myself o- over this. But what I can do is that when I do release a video, it could just be the best video that I can possibly put out, even if it takes me longer. Because I realized that when I was just dropping video back and forth, back and forth, you know, I wasn't seeing the the results that I wanted from it. But when I just took my time, thought about it, and just made a really one good video, I saw better results from that and that's what i've been doing so um harley davidson likes it indian likes it and I'm <laughs> what sure else do you want? yeah what else do i want right you know so um but my goal uh next year is to try to take this thing full time i don't know how yet um probably look like talk- sponsors or something yeah i i don't know i don't really know yet man it's uh it's it's a lot harder i think in this space now to 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 go full time unless you're pulling the views. Um, so you kind of have to get really creative with it. So I, uh, that's, that's what I've been trying to figure out these next few months is how to go full time with it and how to pull more views or what topics I need to cover or what direction I need to go because I am a muscle bike rider. Maybe I need to capitalize on that more, but, um, that's, that's, that's what I've been, that's my task to figure out because, um, I have the momentum. It's just, I need to, uh, um, just capitalize on it. So, yeah. One of my, my current favorite quotes right now is uh, the Denzel Washington one where he says, uh, if you don't commit, you'll never start. And if you're not consistent, you'll never finish. You know, and, and it's just it's fucking it's a strong, powerful. It's simple. Yeah, but it's strong and powerful. You know, you just got to continue doing it no matter what. You know, yeah. and as you keep doing it, you're going to develop new skills and new stuff's going to pop up and everything. I'm, oh, I'm for at, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. You say you're at, you're at what? I, I'm at I'm at a point where I'm 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 contemplating on uh because I've been rocking this with the right boundless name, and mm-hmm. I'm contemplating on moving it to live boundless because I feel like motorcycles is a great niche, but then I'm also kind of limiting the niche of 
interviewing people. And I do this just because I want to pick people's brains. I want to see what, how people think. And it's, it's kind of the only time where I get to tell everybody, Hey, do not call me. Do not mess with me. This is, I'm doing a podcast. Leave me alone. And it's just for personal growth and to share the information and knowledge with people. Mm. But I feel like ride boundless has been kind of limiting me because I've had people saying, I want to be on the podcast, but I don't know about motorcycles. Or I've had listeners come up to me and saying, hey, Robert, I heard a few episodes. I like them. But once you start talking about motorcycles, I don't know anything about bikes. So, you know, again, it's just one of those things that you're going to I don't know where it's going to go a year from now, but you just got to keep doing it. You should definitely try it. And I mean, it, a brand name change is, is, is simple to do. Yeah. Um, yeah it's you, you should definitely try it. Experiment with it. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking about is, is like each episode's called, you know, like this one's RB 55 for 50, 55, 56. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about the ones that are motorcycle topics. I'll put the RB as in ride boundless. And the ones that are, you know, in general would be the LB, you know, live boundless. I don't know. I'm, I'm still, yeah. So then anybody that looks at the episode can be like, oh, this is motorcycles or, oh, this is just general, you know? So I, I might, I might do that, but I'll, I'll figure that out. You should definitely try it. Um, yeah, uh, what, what you're saying about picking people's brains about it. Um, I've luckily I've been, uh, put into the rooms with some people that are doing really well at this, um, in the motorcycle space. And I've been picking their brains the same way you like to pick people on the podcast to figure out things. It's the exact same thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's the one with that, uh, throw, uh, I'll throw that in there. Cool. Uh, one more thing I'm going to ask you, what, what advice would you give to any new rider? To a new rider? Yeah. Uh, don't take yourself too seriously and just have fun with it and definitely, uh, go all in on safety first. It's not That's like this, gears this or not glasses a, uh, or all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say gear gear and definitely uh take taking the classes because one of course you get discounts on your insurance and uh two you you're learning the right way versus figuring out how to ride yourself from somebody else like a youtube video or, or something and then you're trying to break bad habits later so you know learning from somebody that's certified to teach you how to ride the right way teaching you how to avoid traffic and you know, how to ride through an intersection safely versus just learning how to clutch and throttle. That's not, that's just one dimension of riding. Safety is an entirely different d d dimension of riding. Yeah. And, uh, somebody that's just starting out, they shouldn't just be focusing on how to clutch and throttle. They need to be focusing on how not to die, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> and also how to save your skin when you go down and just, just doing things the, the right way. And then as you get more experience, if you don't want to ride with gear, cool, that's your choice. But you know, riding you safely. Yeah, yeah. Start off with it with as much care that's available as possible, for sure. Yeah, that, that that that's a valid point, and I and I also bring up and tell people that uh, if you're going to spend whatever you're going to buy your motorcycle for, get ready to spend another fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred on gear. You know, oh, easier. Sure. Yeah, because people yeah, start buying helmets and they don't buy jackets, and it's just it's just not worth it. They fall into the image that a lot of people show on YouTube, man, of not riding with gear. And it's not that I I, I don't judge anybody about it because my bias is that I had accidents. So, of course, I want to wear my gear and I'm biased towards gear. But um, people don't care about gear until they they go down and they go, shit, I wish I had that gear on. Like The day I had my accident, I had my, my jacket with me. It was in my buddy's uh, saddlebag. <laughs> so, Oops. you know. I, <laughs> yeah, like I had it with me because I was like, oh, it's hot now. I ride with it when it's when it's nighttime because I feel like there's more risk at night. No, yeah. my my risk was during the day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, every, everybody talks down about gear and it being hot un, until they hit that pavement. And then they're, they're sitting there on a bed with bandages on for a whole month wishing that they had the girl on. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot of that because. Uh, 10 plus years ago, I used to be the general manager for Harley Davidson oh, and, and I saw people in accidents, you know, a lot. <laughs> it's just fucking, yeah. you just see it, you know, new riders, experienced riders, drunk riders, crazy riders. And, and, and just when you see it, you're just like, fuck man, you know, people wearing slippers, 
uh, low top shoes. You're just like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? So I, I, I kind of picked it up that way that I, I, I learned from others. That's, that's what I decided to do. Yeah. We all have a, 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 a risk tolerance, right? What we're willing to deal, deal with. So. Yeah. Well, Brandon, thank you for being on the, on the podcast. Uh, like I said, let's do this again. I, I especially want to get your sure. feedback once you do the electrical bikes and, um, maybe I'll see you at one of these, uh, you know, rawhide, um, you know, adventures. You might, man. I got, I got bitten by the, uh, the ADV bug. Yeah. That's just fucking fun as fuck, man. And I want to go to that spot. You were telling me what, the, what is it? The car, the car, the, uh, the car. Yeah. The car. The car. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the Mojave. Yeah. yeah. Zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I might be out your way again soon. So we'll just have to, uh, when I'm back out that way, I definitely let, let you know. Cool, man. Well, I'm going to end it here and until next time. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem.